Alright everybody, welcome back to the next episode in the Airbus Advanced McDo or MCDU Tips and Tricks series. Um, I may have to change that name because I don't want to limit myself just to the McDo, uh, but we'll figure that out later. Today, however, we are still going to be operating in the MCDU and we are going to be talking about the secondary flight plan and how to program the secondary flight plan for a varying set of circumstances. So right now we're in the flight factor A320. Like I said, I'm trying to do both TOLUS and flight factor. However, the flight factors McDo or MCDU is far superior at this point in the development process. So I know there's going to be a major overhaul to the MCDU for the TOLUS 319 and version 1.4, which I will be greatly looking forward to. These procedures will apply to both aircraft as the systems are almost identical between the 319 and the 320. So right now we're going to use the 320 flight factor, but in due time I'm sure we'll be able to do the same exact thing with the TOLUS 319. All right, so the secondary flight plan. Let's talk about that for a second. As we finish the aircraft alignment process here, we're sitting on the ground in Las Vegas, McCarran. We're sitting on runway 26 right. And it looks like we are just about to finish the alignment process here. And what I want to show you guys is how to properly set up your secondary for two situations. An emergency return to field and a special engine out procedure complex special, sometimes they refer to our EO SID, engine out special complex, a bunch of different names. But what we need to look at is this page right here. As you can see, the aircraft just finished its alignment. Let's go ahead and put the train on ND so you guys can see why we're going to be doing this. Obviously, it's VFR right now. You can see the terrain out in front of us here. Las Vegas kind of sits in a bowl in around some mountains here. So that's why this airport has this complex special procedure. We're gonna to come to our secondary flight plan here. This is our secondary index. Anytime you wanna to get to the secondary index, it doesn't matter where you are in the box, just go ahead and press the secondary F plan key right here in your McDo. The first thing we need to do is set up the initialization. So we're gonna do our round robin. Round robin is departure, destination are the same. So K last to K last in the secondary. Once we load that up, we're gonna go right back to our index. Now that we have initialized the secondary flight plan, we need to program it. So we're gonna hit secondary flight plan. This behaves just like your primary flight plan when you're loading your route of flight for any flight that you do in the Airbus. However, it will not be active unless you manually activate it. So first things first, if we take off from Las Vegas and we want to come back around and land, we need to put in an approach. Generally, you're going to put in the longest runway or the longest active runway or a runway that has an ILS, any set of circumstances. We're going to pick the ILS to runway 26 and left for our air return back to Las Vegas. Once I hit ILS 26 left, I don't do anything else. I don't want to transition, I just want the standard vector because if I'm getting, re if I'm doing a return to field, I'm most likely going to be radar vectored from air traffic control. So I want just that standard ILS in there. Now I want to go straight back to the index. Now I want to go from the index back to programming my flight plan. So now we have successfully loaded the ILS 26 left in the secondary. So if we took off and we wanted to come right back around, we can go ahead and select our heading bug, because you always want to pull heading first. Then we would come down to our box here, go secondary, activate, and then it should ask you to confirm activation. I don't know if that's actually modeled yet. I think it activates right when you press activate. Now, this will work for 90%, maybe less, maybe 80% of the airports that you fly into. However, there are some airports that have what's called a special engine out complex procedure. What that means is if you depart from runway 26 right here in Las Vegas and we lose an engine, we're not going to be able to just fly straight out, clean up the airplane, climb up to our altitude, and then be vectored around. We can't do that because of the terrain. If you look outside here, you can see that Las Vegas clearly sits in a bowl. There's terrain all around the airport here. 
Not to mention Las Vegas in the summertime, it's very hot, it's in the desert, the density altitude is high, so aircraft performance will be limited. That's why they come up with a special complex procedure. The procedure that I'm going to show you how to load up today is this one right here for Las Vegas McCarran International, the simple special procedure for takeoff runway 26 right. If we look at the chart, we notice that there is two ways we can fly this. We can fly this by tracking DME 1.9 from ILAS, which is the localizer for Las Vegas, and then a right turn on heading 035 all the way out to 6500 feet, and then right turn back around to Boulder City. If the Las Vegas VOR is in service, which it is, we're going to fly out runway heading to 2.5 nautical miles from LAS or 1.9 from ILAS, and then we're going to make a right turn. If we're going to be tracking the Las Vegas VOR DME, which we are going to be, it shows us it's going to be a right turn heading 010 to 12.3 nautical miles, and then a right turn back around to the airport. In this case, it's right turn back direct to Las Vegas VOR. We can program this pictorially in our secondary flight plan to help us gain situational awareness in a situation like this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make a couple of waypoints using the PBD or Place Bearing Distance format. What we're going to do is we're going to put in the place of Las Vegas VOR separated by a bearing. The bearing off runway 26 right is 259 degrees, 260. So I'm going to put 260 right there. The distance that we need to track out is 2.5. Las Vegas, 260, 2.5 nautical miles. Place that on the discontinuity there. We're going to get two LAS duplicate names. We want to go to the close one, two nautical miles. We don't want to go to this one, 2,000 miles away. We can also verify by the frequency is 116.9. Select LAS. We have now created PBD01. PBD01 stands for Place Bearing Distance 01. It's the first one we've created. Perfect. That is where we're going to commence a right turn to 010. On our chart, it shows we're going to fly heading 010 until reaching 12.3 nautical miles from Las Vegas VOR. How do we do that? Well, we're going to take our PBD01 and use that as a place. PBD01 separated with a forward slash. Bearing is going to be 010. And we're going to track it out to 12 miles from Las Vegas VOR. On the chart, it shows 12.3. If you look at this chart, you can tell that distance is one that you do not want to overshoot because if you continue up past 12.3 you're going to be getting very close to some terrain so for extra safety margin and because this isn't I, exactly distance from Las Vegas VOR it's distance from our PBD01 I'm going to put a distance of 12 give myself a little bit of a buffer just to stay on the safe side of things so I've now created a secondary PBD, which I'm going to place right here, and you can see I've created PBD02. Now after PBD02, we could put in Las Vegas VOR, select the correct one, but now we get this funny looking triangle, and if you try to fly this pattern right here, you're actually going to cycle the box most likely and you're going to lose your waypoints. So we know we're going to turn right, so we're going to delete LAS after PBD02. That way we just have our secondary flight plan as depicted. We're going to go out 2.5 nautical miles to PBD01, and then we're going to make a right turn 010 out to PBD02, and then a right turn back around to the airport. At this point, we can definitely expect radar vectors from air traffic control to get back to the airfield. Remember. This procedure only applies during an emergency situation, so air traffic control will work with you and they will most likely give you whatever you want under emergency conditions. For this video and the sake of the discussion, I'm not going to actually fail the engine on the departure procedure. I just want to show you how to properly execute, activate, and confirm your secondary flight plan so that you can start using secondary flight plans in your flights in the sim.
In later videos, we're actually going to start failing engines and complying with engine out procedures. So by no means is this video going to be an engine out V1 cut profile for you. This is just strictly how to manipulate the secondary flight plan. All right, so now that our secondary flight plan is activated, we can just go right back to our flight plan page. We'll fire up the engines and I'll be right back with you. All right, our aircraft is spooled up. Our takeoff checklist has been completed. We are on runway 26 right. We're going to simulate a takeoff and then a simulated engine failure. So I'm going to just basically level the airplane and we're gonna activate and confirm and fly the secondary flight plan. All right, nose forward on the stick, let's pull them up 50%. Engines are spooled. Manflex, SRS runway, auto thrust blue. Eight it out, the rest set. Neutral by a hundred. V one, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and turn the autopilot on just to make it a little bit easier for myself. And let's say we have engine failure at this point. Select heading. And now what we're going to do is activate and confirm the secondary flight plan. So, secondary, activate. So now we're at secondary flight plan. We can go ahead and go heading mode. And you can see we're 1.7 from LAS. The aircraft is going to make a right turn, 010, after reaching its DME 2.5. I'm going to go ahead and just slow the airplane down a little bit here. Because if we were actually single engine, we would have uh, you know, much slower situation. All right, selecting heading mode, we're going to come right now to 010. Now the aircraft actually wasn't in a nav mode there, so you got to be careful you start that turn. Don't want to go too far past our dedicated waypoint there. But we're in a right turn to 010 now. You can see here that now we're tracking outbound on PBD 02 on a heading of 010. And we're going to stay here until 12.3 and then we're going to make a right turn back around towards the airport. Now at this point, hopefully your FO is already activating and confirmed the approach phase. He's already set up the environmentals and actually you should have these envir environmentals already set prior to departure. And all we have to do now is worry about flying the airplane and complying with any emergencies that we have or any situation that's going on. So probably around this point, air traffic control, if you've already got the airplane cleaned up and everything is looking good, say, can we get radar vectors back to the ILS 26 right? They would say, okay, flight factor 320, come right heading zero. 70 vectors ILS 26 right. So now that we're being vectored off of our engine out procedure, we can go ahead and come back to our flight plan here. And we're going to do our cleanup procedure that I showed you in the previous video. So, direct to function, I'm going to take it right off of Relin 078, insert, and now remember, reselect your heading. And now we have cleaned up our box. We're on vectors to come back around to the ILS 26 right. So this is a proper way to utilize that secondary flight plan. You'll notice we took off. We had a completely other flight plan going the opposite direction. At the press of a button, I was able to activate my secondary flight plan, fly the special engine out procedure. And then once the aircraft is ready to come back and land, all I have to do is go to my direct to function from the previous video that I talked about, clean up the box, get an extended center line, all the environmentals are set, 
all we have to do is fly the airplane and land. I know it was kind of quick and it may, you may have to watch the video two or three times to really grasp the concept of what to do with the secondary flight plan. But in this video, I just want to show you guys how you activate that secondary on a departure when you want to come back to the airport. Remember, not every time you're going to have a simple special procedure where you have to program place bearing and distance, but I just want you to be aware of it and know that you can if it is necessary. More often than not, you're probably just going to have a standard return to field. You're probably just going to have your approach loaded back in there. And if you followed my other videos where I talk about loading the secondary flight plan, getting the performance down for the approach phase, you really have nothing to worry about. Once you activate that secondary flight plan, your approach is completely loaded up, your environmentals, everything is set. All you have to do is fly the airplane. That's what makes the Airbus so nice in this emergency situation because the workload is drastically reduced. You don't have to be heads down. You don't have to be worrying about getting ILS courses and frequencies tuned in. It's all done for you ahead of time. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to activate the secondary flight plan for a return to field. In the next video, we're gonna stay with the secondary and I'm gonna to talk to you about how to use the secondary flight plan for a couple other functions such as uh, distances, and fuel predictions, time predictions, and things like that. On another side note, guys, I, I know it's kind of slow on getting these videos out, just just because the more I dig around in this box, the more I find out things Terrain. aren't exactly finished Terrain. yet, or aren't exactly completed. For instance, I really wanted to show you guys and talk to you about the Fix Info page and how we use this, but as you can see here, it's not complete yet, and Terrain. it is, is still not functioning properly. So. Um, unfortunately, these videos are a little bit slower to come out just because I'm trying to find things that are a little outside of normal but are still modeled. Uh, and I'm, I'm coming to find out it's harder and harder to find those topics that are fully modeled and functional yet. But we're going to get there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you on the next one.